You know, the fundamental principles of the justice system are fairly simple. We learn them as children. They aren't hard. Tell the truth. Take responsibility for your actions. Admit when you're wrong. Play fair and be fair. Don't take or use things that aren't yours. And there are consequences for bad behavior. Even children understand that lying is wrong. When did telling the truth become a supporting player to everything else? Reporters, photographers, and everyone else in southeast Michigan had waited for two months for Wayne County Prosecutor Kim Worthy to speak. Monday morning, she did more than that, putting an end to what may have been the most suspenseful two months in Detroit history. In count one, we charged both of them with conspiracy to obstruct justice, a five-year felony. That count states that they did unlawfully conspire, combine, confederate, and agree together with each other and others to commit the following listed offense, obstruction of justice. In all, she charged Mayor Kwame Kilpatrick with eight felonies, alleging misconduct in office and perjury. The mayor's former chief of staff, Christine Beatty, did not fare much better. She is facing seven felony counts alleging misconduct in office as well as perjury. All rise. Third Circuit Court in County Wayne is now in session. The Honorable Timothy M. Kennedy presiding. You may be seated. You may be quiet. The first sign that Kilpatrick and Beatty were in trouble was spotted even before Worthy's announcement. It came in the courtroom of Wayne County Circuit Court Judge Timothy Kenny. Kenny had ordered the city's top lawyer, John Johnson Jr., and the mayor's cousin, Patricia Peoples, to appear by 9 a.m. to explain why the city has failed to comply with some of Worthy's investigative subpoenas for records possibly related to a text message scandal. I just have some concerns, as we discussed in chambers, with Mr. Burdick. And those concerns are, uh, again, here we are uh, at the 11th hour. This, the, the, back on January 31st is when we issued a subpoena to the city of Detroit and asked them to produce certain documents. Fallout from the Free Press's investigation about text messages Kilpatrick and Beatty exchanged on city-issued pagers has embroiled the mayor in controversy. Kilpatrick chose Peoples to help run the city's Human Resources Department. Well, I do think in light of the fact that the um, penalty for a failure to comply uh, does carry with it a uh, possible jail sentence, um, I do think that uh, in light of the fact that Ms. Peoples has indicated that she wants uh, to hire a, a private attorney, um, I'm going to grant that request. Ms. Peoples, you will be directed. You are ordered to be back here in this courtroom on Friday morning, the 28th of March at 9 o'clock. She and Johnson could be held in contempt if Kenny is not satisfied with her explanation for not producing some documents the prosecutor is seeking. Some of these documents have been turned over, but we have been told that others have been lost or destroyed. We don't know by whom or when. At every bend and turn, there have been attempts by the city through one lawyer or another to block aspects of our investigation. An hour after Worthy rocked Detroit, the mayor appeared with his lawyer, Dan Webb. For once, the mayor brought a prepared statement and stuck to the script. First, uh, obviously, I'm deeply disappointed in the prosecutor's decision. I can't say that I am surprised, however. Um, this has been a very flawed process from the very beginning. Uh, however, at the same time, I recognize that this is merely the first step in a process that I believe in that's grounded in a presumption of innocence that is guaranteed to each and every American citizen by the Constitution of these United States. I look forward to complete exoneration once all the facts surrounding this matter have been brought forth. Detroiters even got a preview of what could be the city's trial of the century. Based on the research I've done, I have not found a single occasion ever that this county prosecutor's office has ever charged anyone with the crime of perjury in a civil case. It's always reserved for criminal cases, and that certainly raises issues 
of what's called selective prosecution, which is an issue that I intend to raise in front of the trial judge that will be assigned to this case. With a statute, so I guess it's okay to lie in a civil trial and it's not okay in a criminal trial? That doesn't make any sense. But there, there are really 8.4 million reasons why we charged in this particular case. Um, and I've, I've laid it out uh, very clearly, I think. The other problem with perjury cases is proof. Perjury cases are supposed to be limited to cases where there's an unambiguous question that's asked so it clearly can be understood by the person who's got to answer it. And then there's an unambiguous answer that is given. There's nothing vague about the discussions that centered around the firing of Gary Brown, as will be litigated. I am as certain as I stand here that the initial production of those text messages was, in fact, illegal under the law. In fact, I say that with absolute certainty. Those messages were first produced in a civil case by Skytel, and I believe Skytel today even recognizes they should not have done that. Under federal law, those messages under the Stored Communications Act absolutely should not have been produced. That's a pretty interesting interpretation of the law, I think. Um, but what I can say is that we obtained them, as just as I said today, lawfully. Um, now how they want to characterize that, it's up to them, and I guess we'll see. I guess he's kind of laid out what he thinks his opinion is. Uh, we have ours. This man, my client, the mayor, is entitled to his day in court. And that day should not be taken away from him by demands for premature resignation. Based on what you've seen, could justice be served simply by the mayor resigning? Or No, absolutely not. Simply by the mayor resigning and nothing else, no. By mid-afternoon, Kilpatrick and his former chief of staff had turned themselves in to Wayne County authorities for fingerprinting and mug shots. They are scheduled to be arraigned today at the 36th District Court.